Hi, it's me, Grant. You're looking attractive today. Welcome to my video. Spoilers. Okay. There's gonna be spoilers. We've covered many things in Deltarune since the release of Chapter 1, but throughout all our videos, I've been purposefully neglecting the most neglected character in the entire game. The Jevil! And while his existence doesn't change any of the opinions and thoughts from our previous videos, he is nevertheless an important part of the story of Deltarune and the Darkner's Land. Yes, this odd jester of disaster is much more than just a prisoner. Prisoner. He's a her! Just kidding. But you never know, right? He's a beacon of what's to come. As Shom the shopkeeper, spelled Seam, says, The Jevil was just a taste of what you'll face from now on. One day soon, you too will begin to realize the futility of your actions. At that time, feel free to come back here and we'll toast to the end of the world. Strong words from a cotton-stuffed teddy bear with a button for an eye. But perhaps this edgy Winnie the Pooh is right? Maybe Jevil is but a taste of the future of Deltarune. If that's that's true, the question should be, why? What is happening that will destroy the Darkner's sense of humanity and life to the point they believe this is all just a game? What really happened to the Jevil? These are the questions I'm going to answer today. So prepare yourself for a story of loneliness a thousand times over, for the tale of one follower who lost their entire mind. This is the story of Jevil, the story. You never knew. Ah, it's always refreshing to do a story you never knew on a character. Reminds me of the good old days. Rippling. Wood chopping. Incredible. Biceps. I'm gonna light the scented candles, run the bathwater, and admit that I'm into it. But this character, Jevil, he's no Master Chief. No, he's something else. Something different. When we meet Jevil through his prison bars, there's little doubt he's insane. I mean, we can't hear his voice, but I believe his dialogue would sound something like this. Woohoo! Boohoo! <laughs> so lonely! Lonely I be! But lo! three visitors standing inside? All right, so far he doesn't seem so bad, right? A bit kooky, uh, I mean, he likes to rhyme and says strange things, but so does Kanye West. That, that doesn't make you inherently a bad person, right? You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. Oh no. Maybe Kanye wasn't the best example for that. Anyway, as he continues, he gets a bit more creepy. I am innocent! Innocent! I just wanted to play a game game. But the boring kings found such fun to be a trouble. As punishment, they craved to imprison my body. But I'm fast, fast, clever, clever. They lost the chase and locked up their entire race, building a prison around the whole world. Now I'm the only free one. Let's pause here. Just from his dialogue, we've already learned a good amount from the Jevil before we've ever even seen him. First off, he believes he's done nothing wrong, yet the kings obviously thought otherwise. So these games he wants to play? They're likely not Scrabble or Tetris, more like the how many murders can I commit before getting caught types of games. Also, he's been locked away for a while. Jevil says, quote, the boring kings found such fun to be a trouble. Currently, there is only one reigning king. Lancer's dad. So Jevil was locked away before the King of Spades went nutso and threw the other three kings in the dungeon. Now, from what we know of the Dark World, the King of Spades went bananas and overthrew the other three kings thanks to the Knight, another mysterious character that we don't get much information on. But based on various dialogues and the king calling the Knight my Knight, much like a servant would call their master my Lord or my King, it's pretty apparent that the Dark World is currently run by this Knight. If we talk to Sham about the Jevil, part of the shopkeep's dialogue is, one day he met a strange someone, and since then he began to change. He started saying bizarre things that didn't completely make sense, but didn't completely not.
not make sense either. Yeah, I kinda got that from my conversation with the guy. But the curious part of Shom's dialogue is that he met with a strange someone. Could this someone be the very night we were just discussing? Well, my curious inquisitors, I actually think not. Let's take a look at the Dark World events as a timeline. Our earliest knowledge of this land is this. There were four kings in joint rule. This was before we came here, before the Jevil got locked up, before everything we know about. Right? So we'll put that as the earliest part of the timeline. However, we don't know exact dates or anything, but this will help us figure out what exactly happened to the Jevil. We know the Jevil gets imprisoned while all the kings are ruling, not just one. Remember, his dialogue specifically says, the boring kings found such fun to be a trouble. Kings, not king. So this means the Jevil was imprisoned before the King of Spades took control of the kingdom, aka the Jevil's imprisonment happened happened during this earlier period, the plural kings period. Since we know the knight's entrance happened around the time that the king of spades got corrupted and took over, it doesn't make sense for the jevil to have spoken to the knight. He would have already been locked up by the time the knight appeared and corrupted the king of spades. So that begs the question, who is the strange someone the jevil talked to? Like our friend Swankybox, I believe there's only one possible answer. W.D. Gaster, the wingding himself, the master of timeline jumping and annoying the schnitzel out of video game speculators everywhere. This idea is backed up by many things, the most prominent being Shom explaining that his view of the world after talking to Jevil became darker, yet darker, a phrase which also appeared in Undertale's 17th lab entry, the one written in Wingdings. In addition to that, Gaster's followers from Undertale, those grey dudes who were all existential and whatnot, well, two of them appear in Deltarune as characters. We got the flaccid guy in the library and the dude sticking out of his car. Since we're seeing Gaster followers from Undertale as characters in this world, and we get Gaster sound effects by using our phone and when going south of town, it's become more and more likely that this is another timeline that Gaster has found. So there's definitely some connection between Deltarune and Gaster, and this connection likely explains Jevil's actions and insanity. If Jevil has a connection to Gaster, it's likely he realizes this world is not what it seems, hence his dialogue of being free despite his imprisonment behind bars. When we finally leave the dark world, we appear in an unused classroom with cards and games strewn about the floor. As I talked about in previous videos, this gives a lot of evidence that the dark world isn't real. It's merely made of games. Jevil's dialogue shows he may very well know the entire existence of his world isn't actually reality. In addition to his constant talk of games, he also acknowledges HP, a game mechanic right before we fight him. This is similar to Sans acknowledging game mechanics in Undertale. It proves he has knowledge that there's a game going on, that he is part of the game, and that knowledge likely comes from W.D. Gaster's involvement, just as Sans's knowledge of such things likely came from Gaster. It's no wonder his attitude began to change knowing his life and everything he does is likely quite meaningless. There's timelines beyond count. He's part of a world that's nothing more than a game. But you already knew that because you totally watched our other video, right? Right? So why would it matter if his games, as he called them, involved killing others? At least that's what his game with us was. Sans, on the other hand, while still working with Gaster, lived in a timeline where choice does matter. When your actions have purpose, it makes it much easier to continue living. Jevil doesn't have that mental safety net. Sans is certainly depressed, but he isn't insane. Jevil, upon realizing that nothing he could do would have any impact on the world, began to see the world as nothing more than a game which it is, the other characters as nothing more than game pieces, which they are. So why not destroy some for fun? He's free because he knows what reality truly is. Yet that doesn't stop him from being lonely, and the loneliness is another part of Jevil's insanity, the part that continues to corrupt him. Did you notice that the Jevil is jailed completely isolated from everyone else? It's strange, isn't it? There's an entire dungeon, a place where the other three kings are kept, where we placed in prison, a place with guards and shackles, and yet the Jevil has an entire floor completely sealed off for his own imprisonment. Why? Why is he completely alone? In my opinion, he was likely jailed away from everyone else so he couldn't speak to them about what he knows of the Dark World. 
how it's all fake. The kings didn't want heretics running rampant, spouting beliefs that nothing matters. Shaum has felt the effects of Jeffel's words. He doesn't care about the world ending in the slightest. He also seems to believe nothing matters. Yet he isn't insane. Why is that? What is the difference between Shaum and the Jevil? If they both possess the same knowledge, it should have the same effect over them. But it doesn't. It doesn't because Shaum hasn't been kept in isolation for who knows how long. The Jevil may be insane, but his insanity doesn't stem from what he knows about the reality of the Dark World. It comes from his solitary confinement. There's been many studies done on solitary confinement. One study on sensory deprivation from 1951 had a group of male students stay in small chambers only furnished with a bed. The subjects were only allowed to go to the bathroom, and even when they did, they had to wear goggles, earplugs, and gloves to limit all their senses. The original plan was to keep them isolated and sensory deprived for six weeks. In reality, not a single student lasted more than seven days. They all lost their ability to think clearly about anything for any length of time. Many of the students even suffered hallucinations. Solitary confinement is also likely to create psychotic and or dangerously depressed inmates. Between 1999 and 2004, another study study found that of all the people who took their own lives in prison, half were in solitary confinement. Considering there's very few people who are even in solitary confinement in contrast to regular prison, that data shows that isolating an individual can do extremely strenuous metal damage. METAL DAMAGE! Wait, mental damage. Solitary confinement causes mental damage. So when we're contemplating the Jevil, everything he says we have to take with a grain of salt. He's almost certainly certifiably insane, but not because of his likely connection to W.D. Gaster. It's because of his imprisonment method, and that's what makes him such a unique and interesting character. Jevil isn't special. He could have been anyone. Look at Gaster's followers from Undertale. They have colored representations of themselves in the games. Monster Kid, or Flaccid Dude, all his followers are represented by ordinary people of this world. And Jevil is no different. He learned hidden truths from Gaster which changed his perception on society and the world, causing him to question existence. But that's not really what made him insane. Solitary confinement is the true cause of Jevil's insanity. Had he not endured it, we likely would have learned more from him about the world and the various timelines. But for now, we'll have to wait for future chapters to give us a glimpse into the rest of the Dark World's history. That's the truth behind the Jevil. He was corrupted by Gaster, certainly. But if we look at his predicament, he was mentally tortured until we uncaged him. That's the story of how loneliness can destroy a mind. Of the Jevil's true nature and how he became what he is. That's the story of the Jevil. The story. You never knew. You know who else is insane from solitary confinement? Your mom! She's currently being probed somewhere in Sector 9 by alien invaders. We got a pic of how it happened. It's here on our shirt, which makes a great holiday gift, by the way. And those definitely aren't tree skull trees. We had nothing to do with it. We swear! Wear this shirt to spread awareness and save your mom's organs and end global warming. Warning, tree skull shirt won't actually end global warming or save your mom. Why keep looking at trees when you could be wearing them? And we'll retweet your merch pic so people will instead be looking at you as if you too were a tree. Join the resistance and enter the forest. To enlist, go to pixelempire.com slash treesicle. Get your uniform and look like a hot stud muffin or sexy mama. Those are your only options. And don't forget to use code treesicle to get 10% off your order. Get them before they're gone. I'll see you out there, recruit. Love, Grant.